When it comes to the world of gaming, there are two acronyms which just do not go together, and they are, of course, MMO and PvP. Whenever cinematics are shown for player versus player in any MMO, it's always portrayed as some huge siege battle with spells and fire and all sorts of shit going on. When in actual fact, it's usually some clunky, laggy mess with very uninspiring PvP modes. So imagine my delight when I hear about Ashes of Creation's plans for PvP. They want open world battles, they want siege battles, they want caravan battles. I mean hell, they even want boat PvP. And I have to say, it sounds too good to be true. Like any MMO in the past which has promised a lot of PvP, such as The Elder Scrolls Online or New World, they kind of just flop a little bit. Don't get me wrong, they both have good PvP. But do they live up to the expectations that were set initially? No. Christ no. So will Ashes of Creation be any different? Well, that's the thing. It seems to be so ingrained into the core game, there's a good chance that the PvP might just live up to expectations. And with that, let's take a look at what they added into the game and what we should be excited about. So let's begin with the fact that it does indeed have open world PvP. However, it does have a flagging system to go along with that. For starters, you start off as a non-combatant, who is someone who's not a threat and is likely running around and picking flowers. If I'm not a bush, I'm not no one. <laughs> and then you have combatant, which is someone who is up for a little scrap. Take your fucking mum's door off its fucking hinges. You and then you have Corrupted, which is of course the horrible people in the open world who go around killing anyone and everyone. My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. And with each flag status comes its own penalty and reward. For instance, if you're a non-combatant or combatant and you die, you lose no gear. However, there is a death penalty involved, which they're still to iron out. But essentially, the death penalty will be like a loss of experience, maybe your luck will go down. Um, as I said, they're still working out the kinks on that. Now, the penalties for being corrupted are of course that you're, one, flagged on the map for bounty hunters, which means people will seek you out and try and kill you, which once again adds to the whole fun of PvP. Uh, you have a chance to lose some gear, which obviously is not great if you lose your best weapon or something. And there's a more severe death penalty. So it's not just going to be a little bit of XP you lose, it'll be a lot of XP. As I said, they're still ironing out the kinks with the death penalties. And at this point, you're probably wondering, how do I become corrupted? Well, let me explain to you this very simple system that they have. So if you're a non-combatant and you attack another combatant, you become a combatant. But if you're a non-combatant and you hit a combatant, you become a combatant. If you're a non-combatant and you attack a corrupted, you're still a non-combatant. But if you're a combatant and you hit a non-combatant, you become corrupted. If you're a combatant and you hit a combatant, you become a combatant. If you're a combatant and you hit a combatant. Essentially, if you go around smacking the shit out of the non-combatants, you're going to become corrupted. It's a way to stop people from griefing the people who are happy picking flowers. But the fact that a non-combatant person can fight back a corrupted and not get penalised means they have nothing to lose. Like, why would you not fight back in that situation? So it stops people from being cowards and actually encourages them to fight, which overall means more PvP for everyone. So this system, as long as they iron out the kinks and make sure the penalties aren't too severe or just brightly balanced, I think this could be amazing. So let's talk caravans. Dex, you like Dex? Um, no, not those sort of caravans, these sort of caravans. The idea behind the caravan system is that you simply can't transfer goods from one city to another unless you use a caravan. This can be done as part of a town quest or simply if you want to move your personal items from one node to another, you're going to have to use a caravan. But essentially, it's another opportunity for PvP to happen. On top of that, it promotes group PvP because you can actually hire other players to help you protect and move your carriage along. Or if you feel like being a complete shitter, you can attack the caravans for a chance at a loot drop. Either way, it's going to make for some fun PvP. But I think what makes this all the more exciting is that it actually adds to the social aspect of this game. This isn't a task you're going to want to attempt alone, so therefore it actually promotes like socialising with other players in an MMO. I mean, you have to probably walk up to people and ask them to help you in an MMO. This is just shocking. This is mind-blowing. I want to see more of this.
Naval combat is just another form of PvP to be added into Ashes of Creation. And as you can see from the world map, there's a lot of water, which means there's a lot of opportunity to fight. And the reason why I think this will work really well in this game is for the simple fact that fast travel isn't something that's easily done. Apparently, it's only select places you can do it, and it's very limited. Which means, if you want to travel across the world and go from island to island, well, you're going to have to get on a boat and fight it out. Which, to me, just sounds like a lot of fun. In regards to what that will look like, it's hard to say at this point. I'm assuming it'll be some cross between Black Desert Online and Sea of Thieves, but honestly, they can go any direction with this at this point. So, it's something to look out for. It's obviously something that's going to drive a lot of excitement, because at the end of the day, who doesn't like pirates? As you can see here, I am joined by the most glorious of defenders to have ever walked the face of Vera. Show me your teeth, defenders. Jump, rise. That's a lot of people on screen at once, and these are just the people defending. The main priority for Ashes of Creation seems to be open world PvP. However, there'll be instance battles in the form of castles and node sieges. Nodes are preset locations which develop with player participation. Each node will have a core benefit and people can become citizens of said nodes and build up over time. You can even build a freehold which is essentially a player housing within said node and elect a mayor. So overall you become very involved in the node and its community and you feel like a sense of pride and with that comes conflict maybe you don't like the mayor of that node or maybe you just don't like the way it looks and you just want to smash it to the ground so why not declare a siege battle and cause total and utter anarchy there are some prerequisites before you can declare a siege battle and on top of that it is going to use up some resources both by the attackers and defenders so you have to look at it from an economical standpoint benefits of a siege battle include wiping it off the face of the earth and of course loot if a node is destroyed in the conflict, you'll lose your citizenship and your freehold, and participants of the siege can loot said node. Considering how much people are fans of housing in game, the thought of losing one to a siege is going to really drive people to partake in said battle. There is of course a cooldown on sieges. This isn't something that's going to happen every other day, it's more like to be once a month, which means that it's going to be a big huge PvP event which everyone will be drawn to. I mean, the fact that it's more exclusive as opposed to something like New World where wars declared every other day, it means it's actually going to be more fun and exciting to take part in. And for that reason, I think this is really going to hit the mark and people are going to love siege battles. The thing to remember with Ashes of Creation is that it's still in its alpha stage. Anything and everything can still change. Case in point, New World's Alpha actually had a lot more build mechanisms when it originally got released. However, devs changed the direction of the game and a lot of it ended up getting scrapped. However, with Ashes of Creation, what they've shown so far seems to be the core PvP functionality. So I can't imagine anything I've just shown changing too dramatically in the future. There's been mention of PvP arenas, but unfortunately the footage is about 5 years old and doesn't do the game justice. But the fact that this was mentioned so early on, I do believe this will be a core feature of the game as well. The problem with a lot of MMOs these days is that they focus solely on PvE. PvP just doesn't get the attention that it deserves, which is a shame because usually it's more thrilling and exciting content than watching someone pick flowers or run in a dungeon for the hundredth time. So if Ashes of Creation delivers on its promise of open world PvP, siege battles, naval battles, 1v1 arenas and all that shit, then hell, this is going to be the best PvP ever in an MMO. But is still an alpha so we have to wait let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on ashes of creation pvp by all means leave a like if you want more ashes of creation content and if you like the sound of my voice or you know you just want to show some support maybe consider subscribing with that i'll catch you on the next one Bye bye